Dobrodojovte v ušte jedna emisija Milenko Nedelkovski show u oktomri mesec, 15. sezona sezona 2019-2020 Za ovoj petok podgotovo fja se jedna emisija so bockanje ja se raboti za nepotizmo tvo jedna od najbitnite granki v opštestveno to življenje v vsekoj država, tako i v našete od druge strane izleze onoj miroljubiv sostanok, kaj predstavljal od Pendarovske, kaj da što si te izlegova zadovoljni, nešto rešeni da oda tvoja Evropska unija in NATO. Iako narod od minata godina na 30. septembri 2018. so se ima sprotivno reši. In mislim, i to da je tema, i to nema da je tema. Če ostavim za nekoj sleden termin. Zašto? Zato što niz naša ta država pravadja golema ta evropska turneja, za koja će doznajete poveće, koja se, koja organizirat evropski te ravnozemljaši, za da može da objasnat, da gi objasnat svoj te gledanje na to, a zašto ti je tvrdat deka zemlja ta je ravna i kako je ravna, kada je počnula, kada je završula. I su si te možni prašenje, na toj način se v sredata beja v vtornik od beja i v centru od Moskopje, na onija koji se zainteresirani da imamo objasniti što ga interesira. Samo da napomenam da je ka gostovanje to na mojot prijatelj, prijatelj Dave od Anglija, koji ovde ka beše ka mene pred tri, pred četiri sezoni i napravi me emisije za ravna zemlja, kada što toj Ja, gdje objasnim si te možne teorije, ja se postavio v samo prašanje, beše razprostranjata niz celi od svet, gdje ki jaz tamo delovima Fina Makedonski, ljudje to, koji se v svetsko to društvo na ravno zemljaši, gdje i vadeja parčinja, tako da što Dave govori na angliski, tako na tamo se da može, da jo razbirat, ne li, nekaj razbira, nekaj je v Indonezija, makedonski jazik, I najgledanite od site, Parčinja, BA1, to beše gledano, znači to se celi delovi od moja ta emisija, kada što piše po zvade, mi rekao da odkoski šov, late night show i tako na tomu, i tako na tomu. Najgledano to video, preneseno video, beše so gledano so 3,7 milijoni, 3 milijoni i 700 iljedi ljudi ko imaju gledano, a drugo to beše 2 milijoni i 800, ima še ovdje koji beha so pomalko gledanost, ne verujem da je bilo koga će postoji neka emisija, ne od Makedonije, od bivša Jugoslavije, koja bi imala takva gledanost. Znači, emisija vo rangot na koja je moja ta emisija, na tog šova emisija. Tako da ja koristam priklikata i ovaj pat, vtor pat se znači vo moja ta emisija, da gostova moj prijatelj Dave, koji se navodja na ta evropska golema turneja, za koja ti ne kaže što je, kako je, i da mu postavim nekog uprašanja koje mi se važne, a to je da ga objasni, pa vi po natamo, tuk natamo, cenite što je pravo, što je krivo, da li ima dubke negovata teorija, nema i tako natamo. Welcome to Macedonia once again, Dave. I'm so glad to be back, really am. Thank you very much that you came, that you include Macedonia in uh, that uh, European big tour? The Macedonia was always always included. I just found out that we were coming here and yeah. I made sure that I was on this part of the tour. Okay. Thank you very much once again. I just explained on Macedonian language to my, to my audience about uh, how a big success was the last show. Mm -hmm. Where When you are a guest in my show, you also told me about that when we drive with the car to, to my studio, mm -hmm. that... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I really felt I had to tell you that, um, you know, your, your show had a huge effect on, on the Flat Earth community. I've, worldwide? Worldwide, yes. I've, I've, been, I've been all over the world um, speaking about it, and everywhere I go, <laughs> I'm told that, um, the, you know, for, by many, many people, the first... Um, uh, introduction. View, introduction into Flat Earth was that video. Through, the, through that show? Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. I hope that I helped. I think you did, to your greatly. Work. On our last appearance, you mm -hmm. and me on my show, 
we explain almost everything. Actually, you explain almost everything. Um, and this is your, your second time. Mm -hmm. So I would like to use this with uh, several questions we'll, which will um, answer some unanswered questions till now. But okay. first of all, uh, can you explain to us what, what, why is this tour? What, what's happened? Why, why, did, why do you travel all those miles, kilometers, thousands, and all those cities, countries? Why, why is this? Well, there was a UK tour um, last year. UK? Um, yes. Through United Kingdom? <clears throat> yes, it went all the way through the United Kingdom. Um, I can't remember how, how many cities, but um, many cities around the UK. And uh, it was a, a great success. So really? this year, yeah, um, this year we decided to extend it to the, the whole of Europe. Mm -hmm. And I think there was something like, um, I think it was, uh, 63 uh, cities in I think 36 countries. Um, now my, I'm only doing a, a part of the tour. Um, I think I'm, I'm, I'm part of uh, 20, 22 countries. Mm -hmm. Um, till now? Uh, not till now. I think, um, I think I've done eight or nine countries so far. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but uh, still got a, a way to go. You came here from Pristina? Yes. And tomorrow you are going to Sofia? Yes, that's right. And from Sofia? Oh, I'm not sure actually. <laughs> um, yeah, literally, it's, um, it's, it's, been a, it's been a rush. We've been going you know, and, every uh, day to a different country. Yeah, okay. And through this... Um, Meeting different kind of uh, of people in, in different countries. What is your opinion about your truth, actually? Um, well, we're, we're meeting a lot of people who, um, who are already on the road to understanding this. And uh, the, you know, I've met a lot of people who say, yeah, you don't have to convince me. Um, I already know it's the, uh, the, the world is flat and we don't live on a ball. Um, um, quite a few I speak to, um, they initially very um, anti the idea and mm -hmm. they don't like the idea at all. But after speaking to them for a while, um, you can almost see the, the cogs turning in their heads and, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're Do you have a lot of, lot of opposition on this? Oh yeah, lots of opposition. On, through this um, travelling, you know? Um, travelling not so much, but, um, you know, when we're out in the street, because what we're doing is street activism. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally yeah, yeah. just put banners out in the street and, mm -hmm. um, you know, just engage with people as they walk by. Um, and who, is, who is financing this? Who is supporting it? Um, well, it's essentially the flat earth community. It's, um, and there isn't a real community, it's just ordinary people um, who like the idea of this tour. Um, we're just putting our money together to, uh, to, 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 to have travel. it done. Mm -hmm. yeah. How many people are including in? You are traveling with. We need to explain to the to our to our viewers that you are traveling with a with a mini one, mm -hmm. actually with a camper. How can I say? Big, no? uh, yeah, motorhome. A motorhome. Yeah, yeah. A motorhome. And um, you are sleeping in there. You are traveling there mm -hmm. and through in, in that. So it's not something which is expensive. Coming with planes, no, sleeping no, no. in there. Fancy hotels or something like that. <laughs> nothing happening. No, no. It's a, It's just a motorhome, and we we park up somewhere for for the night, and then you know go to a different country. Now you will sleep close to my dog, so you will be yes. safe here. <laughs> okay. Uh, how many people are in this? Um, how many people are traveling? You know, you are you 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 are changing, as I understand you. Know, yeah. Right now, because there's, it's um, to, to to have it to. Sure. Um, right now, there's three of us. There were, In this moment, yeah. yes. There were four of us um, up until uh, four days ago. Mm -hmm. um, when I leave the tour, three other people are going to, to join the tour. Mm -hmm. So um, to complete everything. So yes, there's, there's, there's a little sort of yeah, crossover yeah. of people. Okay. So uh, I would like to, to start with, with the real show. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, after your last appearance, my show. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me, do you have any new evidence mm -hmm. about uh, uh, this conclusion, your conclusion that uh, 
earth is flat. Do you have any any, any new things you can you can you can discover to us? Um, in terms of new, there's not an awful lot new because you know we've, we're all working with the same um, limited information that we've got. Mm -hmm. And uh, what what is new is that we're refining. Um, yeah, the information uh, that we're presenting um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with new ideas, new um, new perspectives. So, um, for example, uh, we're told that you don't feel the thousand mile an hour spin um, of the Earth, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and th they say it's because um, the Earth spins around once every 24 hours and that's far too slow for anyone to even feel anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which kind of makes sense, doesn't it? It seems to make sense. A huge Earth, you know, it's not, very, not moving around very fast. But when you consider and you, you kind of um, bring it to real terms, if you imagine me and you on a, a child's roundabout, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, the thing that you go around mm -hmm. on, and it was eight feet across, mm -hmm. Um, and we were on either side of it. Mm -hmm. Now, if that roundabout went round once every 24 hours, mm -hmm. then it would move at three sixteenths of an inch every minute, and you wouldn't notice it. Yeah, mm -hmm. too, very, very tiny, and every minute, and you'd have to study it really hard, and then you go, oh yeah, I see, I see it, I see it moving. I'm moving, I'm moving or I'm not, okay. Yeah. So, if you imagine now that, that roundabout was a mile wide, okay, Mm -hmm. Now it's moving at 2.2 inches a, um, a second, so it's moving like that. Okay, mm -hmm. now you can notice it. Yeah. Now imagine if that roundabout was 8,000 miles wide. Mm -hmm. It'd be moving at um, 1,500 feet per second. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, you would you notice it. it. Yeah. yeah. So um, this idea that you wouldn't notice this motion is, is kind of ridiculous when you bring it to human terms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and now they'll say that motion, you know, a constant motion, you can't feel it. And I'll give you an example of if you're in a train and a train is going at a constant motion, mm -hmm. you can do all sorts of things like pour water and, and just act, you know, act normally on the train mm -hmm. and you wouldn't notice that you're moving. Yeah, yeah. The only thing there is that if you go out. constant motion in a circle is actually acceleration in different directions. Mm -hmm. So you, you're accelerating, mm -hmm. yeah? It's just like if you're going along in a, in a car and, you know, in a, a constant speed, yeah, in a you, straight you line, have sharp... and you have a sharp turn, you're going to be thrown to one side, yeah? If you're on a constant curve, mm -hmm. you'd always be thrown to one side, yeah? You'd feel so it, you'd notice it. So we should it. walk like that, yeah? Yeah, you'd, <laughs> yes, you'd be... All the buildings will be like yeah, you'd be, and trees. But, you know, if you're nearer to the equator you are, the more you'll be want to be thrown off into space, you know, if this was real. It, when you ask the questions, right, the, and, and really sort of um, delve into them, the, it, it becomes ridiculous. Why are we believing this, you know? Um, you're, you're equipped with senses that tell you exactly, you know, what your world is like. You know, mm -hmm. you go out to the beach and you, you look at the sea and it's perfectly flat. And if you doubt that, you can find a sign that's on the beach, mm -hmm. yeah, because they level those signs, and look at the bottom of the sign and compare it to the, uh, to the horizon and it's always going to be completely level. Mm -hmm. So your eyes tell you you're on a flat plane, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Your senses, which are really finely honed, are telling you that you're not moving at uh, 800 miles an hour right now. Yeah. yeah. Right? Your yeah. senses also tell you that down is that way. <laughs> okay? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't tell you anything else. Down is that way. Yeah, right? that's true. But science is, having, uh, is trying to tell you that, no, the Earth is curved and you see things go over a curve. Um, it's also trying to tell you that uh, you are moving at uh, a, a huge speed, faster than the speed of sound. Mm -hmm. And it's also telling you that down is also that way, and that way, and that way, and that way. Yeah? It's the only reason, that, uh, the only way that somebody in Australia can be standing on the bottom of a ball mm -hmm. if down is also that way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah, I understand. So they've tried to make you believe that your senses don't work, and, you know, there's a, a different story um, that, that, again, really doesn't make sense. There is that... Uh... 
in the United States, mm. there is that uh, black guy with his big show who is pro pro NASA, pro mm -hmm. uh, that everything is all already discovered, so we don't need to know anything else. And Neil deGrasse Tyson, are you talking about? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the guy. And I knew that uh, you are in a big fight with him, and on the end, <laughs> he just um, ran away from that fight. He has no answer for the for the clear questions. Sure, it's it actually came from you um, yeah. when I was. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, when I when I was <laughs> flying over to see you. Mm -hmm. I thought I'd better um, have some ideas about what to say to you. Mm -hmm. So I came up with uh, 12, 12 points. Mm -hmm. And um, when I got back home, I thought that these, these are good questions to ask Neil deGrasse Tyson. Mm -hmm. So literally, I, I, wrote, um, I wrote letters, two letters to two of his addresses, of his work addresses. I put um, a video on, on YouTube which mm -hmm. is an open letter to Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah, like a question. Mm -hmm. Please answer the question. Yeah. Sure. And um, I got a lot, a lot, a lot of people to, uh, to write to him on Twitter mm -hmm. to, and to say, there's some questions for you to answer. Um, and, and literally, I, I, every avenue I could think of to get to him, to ask him these questions, I asked them. And uh, he's been avoiding answering the questions. Very simple questions, you know. The only problem is that the answers to these questions uh, contradict the model that they're, they're, they're putting towards us, yeah? So if, they, if he tries to an, um, answer it with a science based question, uh, answer, then the answer is going to contradict with something else in their model. So it's, it, it's deceptively simple, really. Yeah. So that's why he's not going to answer. Tell me, what, uh, what's happened with our friend, Mark Sargent, in the States? What's happened with him? Yeah, how how he is doing? Yeah, um, he's okay. I saw him. Um, when did I see him? I saw him in in Amsterdam. We had a conference in Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, he's he's doing well. Um, yeah, he's doing well. Yeah, in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, Sergeant a prietel nash to je isto tako jedan golem guru u evo ramkite na ramno zemljašite. I ja se obiduvam da go donesem v Makedonijo, da bi da gostim v moje te emisije. Nemam financijski kapacitet to, da go napravim. Znači, ne treba nešto mnogo, treba jedna avionska karta od 1000 dolara. I se nadevam da kaj se najde nekoj, koji bi interesira ova tema, ja plati, če jo plati avionski odbilet za dojde i toj čovek ovde da objasnim, da ga objasni njegovite tezi, koji se poklopuvac od tezite na Dave. Okay, Dave, you can understand that in Macedonia, of course, <coughs> uh, there are a lot of people who didn't watch our show mm. three, four years ago. You know, somebody, somebody is too young or too busy or he mm -hmm. is not at home or not in, he, he was away on some other trip, business trip, pleasure trip. <coughs> so, please, can you, I don't want to bother you with too many questions. Uh, because I hope that this show will also go viral on YouTube <laughs> mm -hmm. everywhere. So you are speaking you know, English because you are an Englishman, I am not. Uh, can you um, show us once again some five, six, seven, ten examples where we can prove, you can prove that Earth is flat, and that those conclusions are not. Uh, uh, nobody can 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 give other arguments on that. Sure. Okay. Well, the very first and most obvious one is that we can't find curvature. So we're supposed to um, we're supposed to be living on a ball, and the oldest proof of that ball is that you can watch a ship go out to sea yeah, and, and go over the curve. Yeah? Which, you know, yes you can. You can go to the beach and see that. It looked like the ship goes over the curve. But nowadays, we have, uh, we have technology. You know, you can go out and buy 
a zoom lens camera and the, the camera of choice is the is a Nikon P1000 now it's a huge mm -hmm. monster of a camera um, so you can watch that ship appear to go over the curve the horizon zoom in and it comes straight back so anyone can do this anyone can buy that camera and go and see see it for themselves I must I must tell you uh, I saw an experiment mm -hmm. which Americans did uh, on the Ontario Lake from the Canadian side to to American side mm -hmm. I think to the threat or something like that and they they show that there is no curve also there are guys there there were guys from Hungary they do that on a Balaton Lake I was one of them yeah really? yeah oh, very good. so I I tried to copy that and mm -hmm. we have a beautiful lake Ochritz Lake okay. a beautiful and big one and uh, to do that from one point with which Sant Naum mm -hmm. to the to the Ochritz uh, port which is almost 40 kilometers 30 I something see which should show that it is like that. Mm -hmm. and, but unfortunately, I have no financial capacity to buy <laughs> those okay. lenses. And also, I ask uh, army, actually a gunnery, you know, those with big guns, mm -hmm. you know, to, 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 to borrow me the, those, they're, they're very specific and very strong, you know, mm -hmm things for looking you know and they 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 they, they were afraid and then they 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 refused they refused yeah so <laughs> i was not able to 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 make an experiment to see maybe maybe you are wrong maybe mm -hmm. you are right but let's see you know sure if we see from this side we, through the lake we, we see the city that, that's it mm. so please continue well, um, funny enough, um, a few days ago we were, we were in Hungary mm -hmm. and I went back to see um, my friend Sandor who organized, Sandor, uh -huh. uh, he organized the, uh, the laser experiment across uh, Lake Balaton and what we did, we had uh, an industrial laser with uh, um, that red, red dot actually. Huh? Yeah, this was a green one okay, and, green, uh, okay. and it had a, what they call okay. a collimator which keeps the beam nice and tight. Uh -huh. um, yeah. And, and literally we shot that beam across the lake and um, me and Sandor were basically went out on a speedboat with a, with a board on the back. Mm -hmm. And it, it shows, yeah? Yeah, and we were hunting that beam <laughs> across the lake. And how many kilometers? Is it? Now we, we went out 12 kilometers mm -hmm. um, across the lake and uh, we took pictures of where the beam was hitting. It never moved. And every t picture has a GPS coordinate so we could plot Always, we always on the same level. Always on, on the, on the same level. Yeah, our our first um, uh, try of the experiment, we literally had the beam just above the water, mm -hmm. right? And what we found something really weird. We found that the beam went along and suddenly just went up like that, just suddenly, just bent up. So we got pictures of the the Why beam bending. Well, um, we we theorise that um, right next to the, the lake was, is, is like high humidity. Mm -hmm. The lake's only a metre deep and it's very, very humid, um, very close to the lake. And when the, uh, the beam gets to a sort of saturation point, um, it literally gets refracted so upwards. So the, the air is not clear enough actually? Yeah, it's just, the air gets the thicker and thicker and thicker. Clear enough. Yeah, when it gets to a certain thickness, then yeah. it, it, it bends the beam upwards. Can we go um, further with other? Um, what, what, what other experiments than this? Yeah. Right, well... Um, no, other evidence actually. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, let's see. Um, gravity, for instance. Um, mm -hmm. I, I put together a thought experiment to show that uh, um, gravity isn't what we think it is. The idea is like um, Newton said that gravity is uh, two masses attracting each other. And uh, Einstein came along and said, no, um, what gravity is, is a mass curving space-time so that things fall towards um, an object. Both of these conceptions of gravity do, um, sort of uh, depend on mass, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, a weight of an object. Okay, so here's a thought experiment. So you get a, 
um, uh, an empty gas bottle and you weigh it and zero out the weight so you're not weighing the gas bottle anymore, okay? And you fill that gas bottle with uh, a pound of helium. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you've, you've measured a pound of helium in that gas bottle. You evacuate that gas bottle into a balloon and then hold um, the balloon out with a, a pound weight and then let go of them. What's going to happen? Mm -hmm. Helium's going to go up, the pound weight's going to go down. <clears throat> so why is that? Because both of them have the weight, the mass of a pound. No, same. Okay? Yes, it doesn't matter if that helium is in liquid form. Yeah? But it's the same number of atoms, same atomic weight, yeah? uh, it, when it's uh, you know, in, in a balloon. Except one goes up, one goes down. Okay? The reason is, it's, it's relative density. Yeah? The, the helium is less dense than the air, so it will go up. Yeah? The, the pound weight is more dense than the air, it will go down. That's it. Now science doesn't know, literally does not know, why things fall to the ground. Yeah, I, I understand that the, the Newton law, actually I will explain to audience in Macedonian, Macedonian language, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Znači, Newtonovi od zakon je nešto što uh, se gleda, međutim nema dokaz. I bilo kada barete po, po bilo što, po naučni, od, od naučnici, od fizičari, barete na Wikipedia, barete u leksikoni, barete u biblioteka, nema objasnovanja za zakon. Deka, to se slučuje, zadaj to, to i to. Znači, Newtonovi od zakon praktično ne je objasnit. Nema objasnovanja. Postoji, da me zemaš nešto palje, a onda se znaje zašto. Ok, that was my explanation. Okay. <laughs> um, one, one other thing um, that nobody can really explain um, with any satisfaction, basically, is that how can you have a, a, a pressurized system next to a vacuum? Okay? Mm -hmm. If you've got any air pressure, any kind of air pressure without a container, it will go automatically to a lower pressure. Yeah? So if you've got um, air pressure next to a vacuum, that air pressure, no matter what, is going to go off to the vacuum. Yeah? It's, gonna, it's literally going to be blown out to the vacuum and disappear. Okay, but the, the answer probably is that gravity is, gravity. is tipping that. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, so the standard experiment to show how weak gravity is is to get um, a magnet and some paper clips and literally lift the paper clips with a magnet. Right? It's showing that this little magnet is, is overcoming the force of the entire planet pulling down on those paper clips. So it's saying magnetism, magnetism is much stronger than gravity. Another um, idea into, um, um, this has popped into my head, um, the, uh, space and going into space with, um, with space suits. NASA has a, a vacuum chamber. Literally, it has, it's made up of two foot of concrete, okay? Um, a space which is a, a lower, um, lower pressure, then another foot of concrete, and then a steel enclosure to protect from um, what would be, I think it's 10 to the minus six tor. That's a unit of, of vacuum. Um, space is supposedly 10 to the minus 16 tor, which is, you know, 10 orders of magnitude more powerful than the vacuum that NASA can produce. And that lower vacuum needs all that to protect you know, from, from one atmosphere of, of, of air, okay? So how can a spacesuit made of rubber, cloth and tin foil protect against a, a vacuum that's orders of magnitude more powerful than a vacuum that NASA can create, which needs two foot of concrete or three foot of concrete altogether and steel to protect it? It's, it's impossible. For me, uh the funniest things thing are um, the uh, commercial airplane flights you know mm. because they are going to zigzag you know which if you are if if you think that 
Earth is sphere. Mm -hmm. In that case, it's it's abnormal for commercial companies to travel longer and with much more time, much more food. Mm -hmm. People to travel longer time, not to be on time, they must go one day early. And so if they can go, can go direct, directly. It was, uh, I think it was the Philippines uh -huh. to, uh, to Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. And literally they had to divert to Alaska, way up in the north, you know. To give uh, birth to, to the, give birth, yeah. To the baby. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, in a, on a flat map, it was a straight line. It was obviously, it was, a, it was literally on the way. Um, so, and the flights you're referring to are um, flights that uh, go in the Southern Hemisphere. In order to go anywhere, um, two points in some of the Southern Hemisphere, all these, most of these flights go up north, thousands of miles out of their way, and then back down again. So I think it's uh, from South America, Chile, to Australia, um, I believe it, uh, it literally goes to Los Angeles. After the down. Yeah. yeah, so from Chile up to Los Angeles and down to, to Australia. But again, when you look at the flat map, straight line. Yeah. Now, um, since we spoke, there have been people, um, there was one chap called uh, Max Egan, who, um, who live streamed his direct flight from Australia to Chile just to prove that, uh, you know, yes, you can do a direct flight and it's 14 hours. The situation of South Pole. Mm -hmm. Why is... Why that piece of... piece of territory? Mm -hmm. Is that much forbidden for ex exploring? Yes, yeah, off limits. Um, why is that? Why, why that is, is because I believe the answers are down there. Um, nobody's ever done, um, you know, north to south polar circumnavigation. You can go around east to west as, you know, as much as you want, because um, that's literally doing a circle on, on a flat earth. And there is no lay there. Yeah. So, um, but you can't go from the north down to the south pole, and then back up, <laughs> the other, then come up the other side. Nobody's ever done that. Now, um, so no Columbus, no Magellan, no, no, no Americo no, Vespucci, no, no, um, no modern submarines, nobody. Well, just recently, somebody claimed to have done that. Um, his name was Colin O'Brady. So we were watching um, his, his route very carefully. Mm -hmm. And when you actually track his route, literally he goes, he, he left from Chile mm -hmm. down to a, a, a polar station and then across to, I believe, um, McMurdo Station. So he went supposedly to the South Pole and then to McMurdo Station. But then he flew back to Chile. Not go around. No. So, so literally, when you see it on the flat map, literally, it's lit, he, he approached, if Chile's here, he approached the South Pole here, went across, a little dip down a little bit, and then back up. And literally, he didn't go anywhere. He just went um, skirted around the. Uh, so that, the edge. that is that is amazing that nobody succeed to 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 make that trip with boat, with submarine or with plane to go like that. Nobody did. Um, because it's very interesting for me. For example, Russians mm -hmm. succeed to put the, their flag on the bottom, on the ocean, under the North Pole. Okay. So they go that deep. Mm -hmm. With machines, with, I don't know, with submarines, it doesn't matter, they, they put the flag. But nobody is interesting to put that on, a, on the South Pole. No. Now, what would be really cool is if somebody went to the South Pole, mm. the South Pole, and uh, with, got their compass, and, you know, showed that compass spinning around wildly, because, if you're at the South Pole, then everywhere is north. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that compass should go wild. Yeah. Um, but nobody's ever done that. Yeah, nobody's ever said, like, we're at the South Pole, here's the proof. Yeah. Um, no, I've never seen, nobody's ever been to the South Pole because there is no South Pole. Um, you know, when, you, when people take package tours to Antarctica, they're shown a barbershop pole 
and said, oh, that's the South Pole. But it's not. They'll, they'll admit it's not actually the South Pole and, and they'll give reasons for it, saying it's too dangerous to get there, it's too cold and all that. Um, just look at this and, and be happy. And you are, you are at the South yeah, Pole? Yeah, we'll say you're at the South Pole. It's OK. You know. But nobody's ever been there um, because it doesn't exist. So the thing is that most of the old ancient civil civilization, they uh, conclude that the earth is flat, you know? yep. mostly. Maybe 90%, maybe more of that. Mm -hmm. They are showing their maps, the everything. Mm -hmm. The question now is, okay, if it is not a sphere, if it is not a ball, mm -hmm. How it looks, you know, where, where where it stays and so on, and that is something which it's very difficult to explain. Um, I guess so, but um, really, I, I think it's um, it's pretty much the same model as the uh, as the round of the ball Earth, but only smaller. Yeah, so um, the ball Earth theory says that space is expanding, you know. Um, they don't tell you what's on the other side of, uh, of, of the universe and doesn't, they don't tell you what it's expanding into. Yeah, so if it's expanding, it's got to be expanding into something. So when, what's that? When people are accusing me here in Macedonia that I'm flat earthist and so on, so mm -hmm. I t I'm telling them that I'm not. Uh, actually, I want just to ask questions. Uh, I just want to open my mind and the mind of other people. You know, mm -hmm. that is the that is the you know. I don't want to be canalized. You know, and uh, yeah. one of the of the funniest things are that that there is no uh, there is no um, picture from the space. There is no paparazzi yeah. who they are not turning down the Hubble. And to, to make a picture. No picture, everything is Photoshop, everything is, you know, yeah. everything is Odyssey 2001 or something like that. Though there, there is coming a time when we're not going to be able to tell the difference between, um, you know, fake and reality. Now, the, the software is getting really good now. Yeah. Um, in fact, um, I've just done, a, I just did a talk at the uh, Amsterdam conference and I ended it with um, the uh, comparison between the uh, shots supposedly from the ISS mm -hmm. from, you know, 10 years ago mm -hmm. compared to the ones today. And um, the ones from 10 years ago, um, the problem was that when you see something coming towards you on the horizon, it was literally moving at the same speed as everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's telling you that what you're looking at wasn't thousands of miles long, it was a few hundred yards, mm -hmm. you know, because everything was moving at the same speed. When, we, uh, when you're on a train, for instance, yeah, you see trees near you go by really quickly, Faster, yeah. and the mountains off in the distance, yeah, stay. they stay. Yeah? So that's, that's what, um, what we see in reality, but we weren't seeing that on, on these ISS pictures. But now, um, the, the ISS um, footage, the, the, the Earth now moves in parallax in that, in mm -hmm. that proper way. You can go onto uh, YouTube and, and listen to a guy called um, Rob Simmon, who uh, works for NASA, mm -hmm. and he explains how he made the big blue marble, which is the picture of Earth, which was the one that was uh, released on the iPhone. So when you got your iPhone, you had a picture of Earth on it. Um, he created that image and he explains how he put it together in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. He said he simulated the atmosphere, he simulated the bright spot where the sun would be reflecting, he coloured the oceans, he made the clouds and made them look like they were he above the earth. He made a picture. Yeah? He made a picture, yes, out of data. And also when I speak with those people who, are, who want to debate and uh, once again, accusing me about the flat mm. earth philosophy. I told them that uh, this, is the, this is the battle between creationists and um, evolutionists. Mm -hmm. And uh, that in, 
by the Bible. Uh, we are all, all believing in Jesus Christ and in God and everything, you know. God saved the queen. Yeah, not, not all of us believe in the Jesus okay, Christ. Okay, okay, but, but, yeah. but in <laughs> any case, those people who are mm -hmm. believing in that, in God we trust, mm -hmm. all Americans, right. Great Britain, God save the queen, mm -hmm. you know. Most of the people, yeah. If they believe in God, that means that they're, uh, they're believing in creation of a God, yeah. like us, like mm -hmm. the planet, like all those animals everywhere. Not in a, uh, because God is not evolutionist. No. No, he is creator. And I told them that it is impossible to, to, to give any evidence that God created us, but also nobody can give any evidence that everything become from a Big Bang. That is same, no evidence. <laughs> exactly, huh? exactly. And a Big Bang came from a Jesuit priest. It wasn't a scientist who came up with that. It was huh? a, a Jesuit priest. And Jesuits. the idea is that nothing, absolutely nothing, suddenly exploded for no reason. Yeah. So you've got nothing, right? Just, just nothing here, nothing. Yeah, but there's air here, but you know, let's imagine there's no air here, nothing. Suddenly that nothing just exploded, and out of that explosion came everything. It's like, okay, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, you know, um, my view on creationism is that, well, there are so many, um, well, virtually everything in, in you know, the animal kingdom yeah, relies on everything else. Yeah? You can't have um, you know, this animal without this insect, and this insect needs that plant, and that plant needs you know, that animal to be spreading its seeds around, mm. and that animal requires this and that. It's all interconnected. So you can't have something evolving in isolation. Something evolving over here and something evolving over there because you know everything is interconnected. So it all had to happen all at once. It all had to come into being all at once. And there's no there's no science for that. Science is just a religion. It's just a different religion. On the end of uh, this show, mm -hmm. I would like you to to ask you one question, which is very important for me. To to, to to have an answer. How it is possible all those big countries, uh, big governments, uh, important ones, which are in all kind of collisions, war, economy, cultural, um, religion, like China, Russia, India, France, Great Britain, uh, United States, mm -hmm. how they achieve all together to to keep this this secret? Right. Why? Well, why? Why? How it is possible? Millions of people are working in all those NASA's, not just American, but all those space agencies in all mm -hmm. those countries. Okay. How they achieve that? Well, the secrecy is very easy. Actually, it's it's called compartmentalization. Yeah. Sorry? It's called compartmentalization. It means that when you go to a bank, for instance, the teller, the, the, the nice girl at the window, doesn't know what's going on in the CEO's office. Yeah? She just knows her little part of the job. You know, she, somebody says, give me some money, and you, she goes, okay, sign this, and she, okay. that's her job. She doesn't know what the directors are doing. Yeah? Okay. You have, it's a pyramid of control. And the deep, the lower but down. But that is about employees. Yes. So but what about the government? Right. Well, um, the fallacy. The Russian here. government uh, said that they send the first, um, first um, animal, first dog, Laika, mm -hmm. first man, Yuri Gagarin, uh, Valentina Tereshkova. Uh, Americans said that they, Neil Armstrong, landed on the moon. And so, how mm -hmm. they are. Why they are not uh, well if you fight if, yeah the, the thing is that we all believe that we all live in separate countries with uh, with different leadership yeah they're all working together 
You know, we're, it's all for show, okay? Um, but one of the evidences of that is the Antarctic Treaty. All these countries that have been fighting each other for over the last, uh, um, well, I think it's 70 years now, um, they've never disagreed on the Antarctic Treaty. Yeah? Russia has got a place down there, America's got a place, but they've never, never, never argued. Yeah? They never argued over that treaty. But why they are keeping that secret? Why? Why is that needed to keep that secret? Because, as I said, there are no separate countries anymore. Okay. Why, why? they want to 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 keep us in uh, no knowledge and uh, like a slaves? Uh, well, knowledge is power. Okay. That's true. And uh, you know, if you if you have a small group of people who want to control seven billion people or however many people there are around today, today then you need to psychologically um, reduce people to uh, a place of in insignificance. Can you know? I conclude that this, this is actually just one chain in a worldwide slavery? Yes. You know, I, I, I've, I think I said it before that, you know, this, the Baller theory, the Big Bang and the theory of evolution, yeah, combined together makes you feel like nothing. And, uh, and if you've got no purpose, then some powerful people can come along and give you a purpose and say, your purpose in life is to get good grades at school, get yourself a good job, yeah, buy a house, have 2.1 children, right, and, and you know, just buy better things, bigger cars, you know, until you die. And that's your purpose. On the end, Dave, thank you very much for your appearance in my show. Um, can you give to my fellow Macedonians a um, sentence or two about, about everything, about life? Okay. Which is part of this uh, flat earth philosophy. Well, it goes way beyond the flat earth, yeah. My, my work, final parting words are to ask questions about your world and about yourself because you know, the, the answers are, are more incredible than you can possibly imagine. Yeah? Um, there's more to you than you think. The world is smaller than you think and you are much bigger in it. That's all I would say. Thank you very much, Dave. Uh, because you're in my show, because you're in Macedonia and Skopje. Thank you very much. Hope that I will see you very soon once again. Well, thank you for having me. It's been it's been great to see you again after so many years. It's uh, <laughs> yeah. I say it's been a it's been a ride. Okay, thank you very much. To Abishad Dave, my friend of the Great Britain, of Anglia, on the topic of the Earth, you have the right to discuss it with him, to defend it, to defend it, to defend it. That's your right. I don't have any intention to defend it, to defend it, to defend it, to defend it. No. Bi zamolil, ako veke diskutirate da je to argumentirano, da može da se razvije poubava debata. Da ne bi da su navredi, etiketi, ovo bilo to, da se znaje veke. Da ako se reklo se znaje veke pred 200 godine, ne bi bile otkrijene ne znam koliko rabote. Ako se reklo se znaje veke 75. godina, sve je jasno, ne bi bile ni laptopi, ni kompjuteri, ni internet, ni nešto. Tako da, evo Dave na kraju vi reći, otvorite go mozak. Hvala vam mnogo što bi ste prisutni u mojete emisije ovaj petok. Se gledamo sljedeći petok. Prijatno i se zdravljamo.